Hey, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this procedural beach animation. It's not really a full tutorial, more of a breakdown where I'm just going to be walking you through the network. But yeah, let's get started. Half circle. That is stacked, transformed and stacked on top of itself. We then use the, the twist to make it more beach-like. And then we take that, take the position information, take the Z information, which is the, 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 the one that makes it beach-like, and we distort that by adding some noise. Um, you, you can, we're resampling this because we want the noise, which normally is like at this amount of samples, we want it to match the amount of samples of the information that we have coming in. So we resample it to match the amount of information, remap the noise from zero to one, and then we combine that noise that then this is just r random noise. We combine that with the position information and that's how we get the amount of distortion of of the waves. You know, you can make it more or less. So we have that combine that position information back in with here. And then we basically rearrange it so it's the same order that it came in as. Put it back into the original geometry stream so we're basically editing all this this chop stuff is basically just adding noise to the z position of this stack of circles and because it's a stack each one gets kind of affected differently so that it's not like the same noise is copied to all of them because we do it in this order and then we stack a different noise on top of that just a regular noise stop just stacked on top of that and so now the geometry is basically this stack of circles with a wavy pattern on them. And the way we make it act like a beach is we have this LFO, which we have the scale mapped to at the beginning before we do these other transformations. So that's how we get the, you know, ebb and flow feeling of the beach. We have the LFO set onto Gaussian. So that's basically the geometry setup. The whole idea behind this is basically taking some sort of geometry, making it move in a type of way that is mimicking what we want to achieve, which is in this case, a beach. And then we're going to then layer on top of that render effects to make it even more so that desired effects. So we have a camera set up, basically viewing it from above. We have basically just a basic fog material, which is a blue color. We're rendering that out just by itself, adding a tan beachy background with the transform. You know, you could always you know, add like some sort of texture or something if you wanted to make it more. And then we're going into a feedback loop. And the feedback loop is basically just distorting and mixing the water with the sand and the idea is to make some like watery frothy type of effects so we start with the transform by moving it slightly so it kind of drifts so the water you know it kind of drifts we blur it we displace it by this noise. This is a, this tileable noise that uh, you can find on, um, I'll link it in the description. 
be displacing that, which sort of breaks up, makes it a bit more dynamic. and flowy. We have opacity set so that it doesn't get, otherwise it'll get super blown out. So we have the opacity so that it kind of stays at a nice moderate level. And then we are displacing it some more with some more noise, just another level of displacement. And then we're displacing it by itself with a blur. So just a lot of displacement, all these displacements are set very low in the hundredths place or whatever. Um, yeah, that's basically the setup, you know, that whole idea is to take some form of geometry in this case, we wanted to achieve a beach effect, so we kind of stacked a bunch of wavy circles on top of each other to get a wavy effect, used an LFO to make it move in and out. And then we used some render effects, basically just colors and a feedback loop to mix those colors using blurs and displacements and noise. And that is how we achieved this beachy effect. You know, you could always apply the same kind of principle to a lot of other things, sort of making a form in the geometry context of Touch Designer, and then using the render effects to sort of bring that to life and add another layers on top of that. And just, you know, working in, in layers and saying, what do you want to achieve? What is like a basic form using the basic tools that you have available? You know, there's circles, there's cylinders, there's cubes, boxes. You know, you can make a lot of things from these basic forms, especially once you add color and movement to them. And it, you can really get creative with that, especially with, you know, adding these food feedback, feedback loops on top. So yeah, that's just a quick little breakdown. I don't know how quick that was, but just a breakdown of how you could achieve this type of effects in Touch Designer. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave those in the comments. And yeah, have a nice rest of whichever time period that you are watching this in.